Hello and welcome to Daily Oz Music. My name is Colin McDonald. Now, last week we saw Jackie Vinson trending in Austin for both her heartfelt and amazing statement, Speak Up, Don't Let This Fight Against Racism Die, which you should absolutely read. I've got a link down below. But then again on June 12th, when a news story broke, amid diversity issues, Jackie Vinson walks away from Blues on the Green. In Austin 360 article by Deborah Sengupta Stith, we learned that Jackie was offered Blues on the Green gig by Andy Langer. The bill was originally going to be me, Bob Schneider, and Shiny Ribs, Vincent said on Thursday, and I didn't want to be a part of that because I felt like I would have been a direct hypocrite to everything I just posted publicly online. I'm getting dangerously close to a token situation right now. I told them that I would only be on it if there was going to be an all-black lineup because it's long overdue, Vincent said. And later in the article, it goes on to describe a miscommunication between Jackie's team and Andy Langer regarding the, quote, ability of black artists to draw crowds, end quote. The reaction to that and the lack of black artists on Blues on the Green roster recent, in recent years consumed the Austin music community and many let their true colors show. Shortly after that, the story ran, Mr. Langer issued his own statement. I mean, cool. But as Jackie said in her original statement, what are you willing to do? And later it was announced that there would be a Blues on the Screen show curated by Jackie Vincent and herself coming up on July 8th. That's awesome. So pay attention because when we are faced with so many words on screens or quietly whispered in hallways or even shouted in the streets, actions are what truly make a difference. So pay attention. Don't pay attention to the apologies. Pay attention to what happens next. And what happened next is the Black Music Fund. Now, we're going to talk a lot more about this next week. I hope to have Chaka on the show, but essentially, you should watch the video. Chaka has, has brought up the, the idea of a black music fund to Austin's attention, and it was first brought up during a work group meeting that is responsible for making recommendations to the Music Commission so that the Music Commission can then make a recommendation to the City Council on how the hotel occupancy tax fund should be distributed. That's right. Chaka's voice and vision is so powerful that it was heard and seen through all that red tape. And earlier this week, he released a video from the working group where he presented his idea for the Black Music Fund. And the response, caught on film for all to see, was pretty much the most Austin response ever. First, uncomfortable silence. Followed by, uh, thank you, great, great idea, but here's where you're wrong, here's what you should be doing, and don't take money from my bucket, find your own. And the classic, what about isms. And I was really disappointed in some of the musician responses, but, and as well, honestly, mostly I was just disappointed in the whataboutism. It was said that since Chaka was against the $2 billion convention center that enabled this live music fund, he shouldn't be entitled to ask for anything, even if it happens to be representation for black people in the live music fund. Crazy. What do you think? I can't wait to have Chaka on the show next week to find out more. Honestly, with so much uncertainty in the community, it's important to keep your eyes and ears open. Watch for what happens next. Do more, better, faster. We'll be right back with the amazing Tyranny T. Double Johnson after these messages. Austin's number one source for hip hop and R&B. Listen every Saturday from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. on KUTX 98.9. Now you can also catch up with the breaks on their new, brand new podcast releasing every Monday along with weekly playlists exclusively on Spotify. Confucius Jones and Fresh know the Austin music hip hop scene and are an excellent resource for all things Austin music. Be sure to check them out in the links down below. Hello and welcome to Daily Austin Music. My name is Colin McDonald. This is Damn Art. Daily Austin Music album review time. And today we're going to be taking a listen to the new EP by Jake Lloyd, Lloyd Pack. I knew I was going to love it before I even heard it, but I, I really didn't know how much. Now this thing starts off with a nice funky guitar riff and my first impression is this is how I wanted the Gary Clark Jr. record to sound. This thing is so well produced. The double time feel at the end with the siren guitars and the sound effects really gave me chills. This thing harkens back to the greats like Stevie's Living in the City. And then the knockout blow, Smoke and Mirrors. I mean, this thing starts off with like a big Lebowski narrator and a tack piano with some smooth movie strings and then the harmonies and that melody, not to mention those gospel drums and that groove. Y'all, this is the song I knew I wanted but didn't know I was gonna get from Jake Lloyd. I, I, I'm kind of mad though, cause it's not 12 minutes. It's like three. Now the past, the last track is one that really shows off Jake's style and lyricism and storytelling. Now, sidebar, I love the drum production on all three of these. They're extremely tastefully played, mixed, and recorded. Seriously made me happy. Now, the sounds, the feel, the message, the stories, I'm honestly mad that it's only three songs. 
So be sure to check this thing out. With every listen, it just gets better and better. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to buy, share, and stream this music wherever you can. Welcome back to The Damn Tonight Show. I am, am thankful and, and grateful to be here with T-Double, Tarani Johnson, man who has been around in Austin for the longest time doing awesome work in the music scene and the creative scene. Um, Thank you. First of all, how you doing, man? Like with, with everything that's going like today is uh, June 16th. So this yeah. will be airing on tomorrow. So, you know, how you doing right now? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, you know, I had some health issues that I was mm-hmm. dealing with. So I just been taking it real easy, not really being outside, you know, cause I have a weak immune system, right? Because of my kidneys right. and stuff. So I haven't really been outside as much, but I got a studio in my house, man. So my life really hasn't changed as much because I've always been in the studio. So when right. people got locked down with the pandemic or whatever, I was still in the studio. So yeah. nothing, nothing really changed. I just, you know, was recreating more. But I'm doing good, man. Like, you know, life is good. Family's good. You know what I mean? Up here talking with you again, catching up. It's been like, what, three years, maybe? Yeah, at least, years, right. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, man. Good. And, and when you say you have a studio in your house, like a lot of people say that, but right. you actually have a studio in your house. I'll put up some right. pictures of the stuff I've been like following you on, on social media. It's awesome for me because it always makes me want to work. But at the <laughs> same time, it's like, dang, man, like you're just <laughs> always getting it. You're always experimenting yeah. with new gear. And man, it's just it's inspiring for me to watch. And let's let's jump into that because you've been you've been making music for how long i mean oh man probably 30 years maybe something like that you know I me mean? i started uh probably when i was like eight right. and mailed my first demo to warner brothers at nine and then got started getting publishing around 14 right. off of records i was doing so my my whole life man in, anybody that knows me they're like he's been doing music his whole life yeah. so at least at least 30 years now doing it so I'm, I'm, l- I'm lucky on that. And to be living in Austin, doing it, doing hip hop in Austin. A lot of people say you can't do it and you can't have a career. And I'm, I'm proof that you can. Yeah. And, and have a, a flourishing and, and awesome, thriving career. Because, I mean, you, you've gotten yeah. spots on, on Breaking Bad, uh, yeah. on plenty of more stuff. Like kind of one of the one of the questions I love to ask about from people that have been in Austin for a long time is mm-hmm. you know, besides the growth besides traffic, besides kind of the obvious stuff. Right. What, what, how have you seen Austin change over the last, you know, three decades? Oh man. Um, those are basically the main things. Like the music scene in Austin really hasn't grown to where it should be in 2020, you know? And I've seen it where I'll probably say the music scene in Austin was the best, probably like late eighties, middle of the nineties. Right. That's when we had record labels here. That's when we had publishers here. That's when people were getting record deals. That's when labels were here looking for people. Now, none of that is going on, right? So I think as far as the music end, artists are kind of kind of have to start from scratch on how to be as competitive as a label now, because right now the playing field is even. Nobody's touring. The record labels aren't selling music. So the artists have a real good chance to redevelop what the model has been for years. So as far as music, it's a great time to do new things and be innovative and create something new. As far as living here, you know, like you said, the traffic, more people, um, it's more dense, right? Like, you know, you can't really go anywhere without bumping into somebody. I-35 should have been expanded to like four or five lanes, (laughs) you know, when I was a teenager, right? Right. So. We're, we're behind on a, on a lot of things. So as far as on that, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, you know, when South by Southwest would come or ACL Fest, I would stay off the streets. Right. Because right. it's, it's just too much going on. Yeah. And that, that comes from the experience of just being here and seeing yeah, it so long, just yeah. locked down. But in, in another thing, like with your experience being in the, in the Austin music scene and, and just the music scene in general, you're, you're, passing that knowledge on with the urban artist Alliance with right. the, your, are you still the urban music director for South by? No, I, I, uh, that's probably been like, maybe I did that maybe 20 years ago. Something oh, really? like that. Okay. Yeah, it, it, 
it was a while back, but I was the that first one. Sense. Yeah, I was the first. I was the, I was I was the first one there that really started including the in, the East Side right, into showcases, right. right? So before me, there was Andre Walker, okay. and he he basically did like he did some hip hop stuff, but he was mostly doing R and B stuff. Okay. And before him, there was a guy named Keir Worthy, Keir Worthy, who brought Def Jam Records here before it went to Atlanta. It went to Atlanta, and that's where they signed Ludacris. And Scarface was the president of Atlanta, but it was in Austin first. Really? So he was, yeah, so he was doing that. So those were the guys who preceded me. And then when I came in, I was young. I was scrappy. I said, let me do something different. So I got everybody from the east side and said, we're all going to get involved in South by Southwest because a lot of these guys didn't even know about it, right? right? Because South by Southwest communication with other parts of town, even to this day, is pretty bad. Yes. They don't really outreach, right? So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go to the east side. I'm gonna get all these groups. I'm gonna book all these guys. So it it was dope, man. And that and that just goes to show that like you've been on the front lines of this issue for 20 years at least, yeah. Or 30, you know, forever. Yeah. yeah. And it's still the same thing. And I, and and you can stop me if you don't want to get into it. But no, go ahead. Um, the the whole Jackie Vinson blues on the green. Well, my thing with, you know, even even without Jackie being involved in it, my thing as far as being a, a black creator in Austin for as long as I've done it, I've always looked at it like hip hop and R&B and soul music is akin to punk rock. Right. Where you have to do it yourself. Right. I'm not I'm not big on saying, how come you're not booking me? Please book me. That's not that's not in my DNA to say, please book T double. If you don't want to book me. Years ago, when I wasn't getting booked, I went to Stubbs and started doing my own shows, right? When yeah. the Chronicle wasn't covering hip hop, years ago, me and Babu Blakes created Show and Prove. Mm -hmm. We created our own hip hop newsletter to cover our own culture, right? So I'm from that aesthetic, right, where we do it ourselves. Because when you get to a point where you're asking an entity or whomever to say, how come you're not booking me? You're giving them that power to tell you that you're not as amazing or as great as you are, that right. you need that you need them to to validate who you are when you can do it yourself. You know, yeah. I, I say, you know, like blues on the green, anything, everything in Austin started from a couple of people getting together, putting their money together and the idea and creating it. And it blew up. Right. So urban artists, we can get together, put our money together, find a spot, find a club, create the same thing. And like I said earlier, now is the perfect time to do it. Right. Because the clubs need money, so they'll they'll basically rent out to you for whatever. You mm -hmm. could probably buy a club now, right? <laughs> Everything is different. You can do so many things now. So it's right. it's just really a different way of of thinking and how you reach out to your demographic and how you want to grow. And I'm glad that she that she said she wouldn't do the gig unless there was a bill of all black artists. Mm -hmm. I think that should have happened years ago. They should have already done that. I agree with yeah. that part. But waiting for them to say you know, yeah, you're right. Black artists are amazing. We already knew that. So we could have done all these things ourselves, but right. that's just me being older. I've done it for, I've done it for longer. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more braver, right? Because I'm not part of a crew, a posse. My words won't affect five other artists or five other people who are down with me. So that's why I like being in the position that I am where I could talk, I could talk shit a little bit more. I could swing my hammer a little harder than yeah. the average artist. Right. So, right. And, and you've earned the right to do that. Yeah, totally. What can you use from your past of how you got here mm -hmm. to kind of direct yourself and other people going forward and whatever the hell happens next after, you know, this new music industry that we could possibly, please God, hopefully have <laughs> and all these venues right. die and all this stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think, you know, what I've basically learned from the past and being around motivational people I always had people on who were supporting me who never supported me because they wanted any money from me yeah. or they wanted any publishing from me they never wanted to own my masters they just wanted me to become better right right they wanted me to become the best I can be and that's how I try to share with other artists make them become better but it's really about just evolving right like never staying it like I, I look at it like this like like when I talk to a lot of artists, they'll say, okay, you were signed, I was signed to Good Vibes, right? Good Vibes had Jay Dillard, had all these things. A lot of people would have stopped right there because I was in The Source, I was in Vibe, I, you know, Rap I was in all these magazines. A lot of people would have said, that was my highlight. But I always thought, what's my next thing, right? When I started Kinetic, when 
<clears throat> excuse me, with me and Mirage, he was going to Prairie View, Uni or Prairie View University. And um, I was working at Arista Austin, Arista Records that was here. And I was doing, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was doing A&R and marketing. And we always had a thing, we had a five year plan. Right. Where are we gonna be in five years? We always tried to move forward, what's our next move? So a lot of artists stick in one place, yep. just like performing in Austin, right? A lot of artists are comfortable performing in gigs, like in clubs, but they don't ever think we could own a club. Why, why are we saying, dear promoter, why won't you promote me? Why don't I become a promoter? Yeah. Right? Why don't, if, I, if I go to a gig and they only want to pay me $200, well, if I throw the gig, now I make $1,000, right? So you are, you know, I've always thought, let's, let's be progressive. Let's move forward. And right. so when I started the Urban Artists Alliance, because I've been a part of a lot of different things like Austin Music Foundation, right, right. Uh, Black Fret, I'm on the advisory board of that now. And a, lot of, and a lot of other organizations in Austin that, you know, we probably have like maybe 200 nonprofits for music in Austin or more, right? Yeah. Some yeah. of them I can't even name, but right. a lot of those don't cater to Latin artists. They don't cater to black artists. They don't cater to jazz, metal, mm -hmm. uh, other genres, right? So I said, instead of me sitting here whining about it, like, how come y'all aren't giving grants to hip hop artists? How come y'all aren't whatever? I created the Urban Artists Alliance to do that. So then I was able to go to these other organizations and say, I have this entity, now let's partner. Right. So I got with Black Fred and we were able to give grants to Magna Carter, Jackie right. Vincent, Writers Gets the Storm, Ray Prim, Ty Austin, a lot of black artists who normally wouldn't be even in the conversation. Right. Now I make, a in, a, I'm, I make sure that we're at the table when these discussions come for grants. Right. So I try to create something that's going to be the, the wrecking ball, so to speak, to make things happen. So I, when I talk to artists, I'm like, where do you want to be in, you know, it can't be five years now because the music industry is done as we know it. Yeah. Where, do you want, where do you want to be in three months? <laughs> where do you want to be in six months, right? Yep. Where, where, you know, when I got into licensing and sync, a lot of people were telling me, you can't do that because that's mostly a rock thing. Hip hop right. artists can't do that but I went full stream in it and that was like 19 years ago. Yeah, and it sure came around, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, and, and it worked. And the, thing, and, the thing, and, the, and the thing about it, when I teach artists about owning their, their cause I'm real big on ownership. Yes. When I teach artists about publishing and masters, like right now we're in a pandemic, people aren't working, right? right. I'm still getting publishing checks and licensing checks from the work I've done over the years. Yeah. So I'm sustaining through this by work I did five years ago, right. 10 years ago. And that's, that's the, right. And that's that mailbox money that, totally. that you just, you cannot, I, mean, I don't know how stocks work. I don't know how like savings account or anything like that. Right. But right. like the fact that I did work 20 years ago that I'm getting paid for still today exactly. is a wonderful thing. That exactly. I'm very, very super thankful. And it's, and, and it's just, it's just getting, you know, it's just getting the artists to think about that. A lot of artists, you know, will say, I tell artists all the time, I'm like, do you want to be 50 years old, 60 years old, still gigging on sixth street? Yeah. Or do you want to? Some of them wanna, do. Yeah. Or do you want to have, because they didn't think ahead. Yeah. They, they didn't have the education about ownership of their music right. and their rights to be able to sustain themselves now. Like, you know, George Clinton, he's like almost 90 and he still has to tour because yeah. he gave away all his records and, you know. Man, that that's, man. Oh, God, that's nuts. And that, that yeah. is one of the specific things I hope comes out of like this the black lives matter movement and the kind right. of the reawakening if we could go back and redo some of those a lot of all of those contracts especially yep. for you know artists that have passed and their families that should totally. have been built up from that totally I, there's no reason that like yeah so please god let, let us have that happen yep. Um, yep. and one thing and and we might close with this i don't know but um when, when I first started following you, it had to have been like five years ago, you know, a couple mm -hmm. years before I interviewed the first time. You were always posting, uh, you know, stuff like, hey, I, I just got a new check in the mailbox from my publishing, right. you know, stuff like that. And when I first saw that, I was like, oh, dude, no. Why are you telling people, you know, and it, right. as I kept seeing it and as I, you know, got smarter, because that's what you do, hopefully, as you get older. Right. I started seeing that you, somebody will see that and say, oh, I want that for myself and I have an example and like, so you, your consistency on that changed my perspective on what I thought was like, you know, bragging or whatever right. it was puffing up or whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it's actually the most 
educational and and future minded thing you can do yeah, is by because, showing that example. Yeah, because when I when I first started doing that, right, like people around me was like, "Don't tell them you got publishing check. Don't yeah, don't yeah. talk about whatever." But I was like, I said, "Well, I'm from Austin, right? I'm from the soil here, and there are tons of black artists in Austin." who need that motivation to see that yeah. somebody who looks like them, who went to Keelan Junior High, who went to McCallum, went to Reagan, who's from here, is being a success doing music. And that's what I get now, right? Like a lot of people started off thinking how you said, like, mm -hmm. uh, here, here you go again. Like, yeah. okay, we, we get it, we get it, right? But then it became like, oh shit, he's doing it. And then when they started talking to me and I started sharing information on how they can do it, yeah. then it made more sense to them. They were like, Okay, like there's quite a few artists in Austin now who are getting publishing checks because I, I, I educated them on how to get out of record deals. I've gotten artists out of record deals mm -hmm. and I've gotten them into better deals. Right. And I've never asked for no money from them. I just did it, you know, just for the love. Right. And, and for the love and for the community and for yeah. like the, the... To that point, it's like I, I always tell people that if you've, got, if you've gotten blessed by something, right, if your career is going well or something, and you don't share that information. Like my mother was a teacher. And if you don't share that information with somebody, then you're part of the problem. Because you could, you could actually make other people's lives better by sharing it. Like I've gone through so much over the years. Like I, I, I started rapping in hip in Austin hip hop when we couldn't perform on 6th Street. Right? When the only way we could do shows was Doris Miller, Rosewood, Givens Park on the east side. I couldn't even, I couldn't even go to 6th Street. It was, it was a anti-black hip-hop artist thing on 6th Street, which still kind of is, but it's just not as prevalent. But back then it was like, no, uh-uh. So I'm from that era. So I don't want the artists that are doing stuff now to backtrack into a place that is not as fun. I made more money then because we had our own demographic where everybody came to our shows, right. but the expansion of who you are and your name wasn't, you know, it wasn't getting there. But That's, yeah, if you if you got knowledge, you got game. It's up to you to to share that knowledge in that game to and, whomever. And and the the gatekeepers in this town would would be would would do well to hear that message too. Yeah. And everybody that has success has to do what you're doing and say, "This is how I did this. Let's exactly. all rise up together and." do this on 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 a new level that we've never experienced because a lot of a lot of people a lot of people don't want to share the game and the knowledge because they fear they might lose their position at the top right and, and you got to assume that they they think they got lucky right because if you're confident in yourself and how you got there you're confident enough to know i can get right back up doing something totally. different you know totally. and that's that's the attitude that hip-hop has that punk rock has yeah that that we're all in this together, but dude, thank you so much for being on this show. And, and I want to hit you back. Like anytime you want to be on, just text me and be like, Hey, I'm, I got some stuff to say. We're on. Yeah, I, We're I got some, you know, I got some new projects coming up. I got some new movie things coming up. Nice. Uh, I got some cool things in the canon. So, you know, when, when we talk again, then we can really get more in depth. We can do an hour long interview. You know? Man, T double Tyranny, Thank you so much for being on the show. Y'all be sure to follow. T double and everything he does and follow along with what's going on in our music community because we're all in this together. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Do more, better, faster. I will see you tomorrow.